Welcome to the Diablo 3 open Q&A panel. Hello, everybody. My name is Jay Wilson. I'm the game director on Diablo 3. Um, I have a whole bunch of uh, awesome people here from the Diablo 3 team. Uh, I have Joseph Lawrence, uh, who is our audio engineer. Uh, Jason Regeer, lead programmer. Kevin Martins, lead content designer. Patrick Stone, senior environment artist. Michael Chu, quest designer. Leonard Bararski, lead world designer. Christian Leitner, art director. Nathan Lutzok, associate producer, and Alex Mayberry, senior producer. So as you see, we have somebody from every discipline, so you have to ask questions about audio and programming, and you know, don't just, don't just do all the you know, questions about rainbows and unicorns. You know, make sure you get to all of them. So and other than that, have fun. All right, here we go. Okay, hi guys, and thank you for everything you've shown us so far. So I had a question. Basically, you said that you wanted to make the player focus on the game and not on the UI, basically. Uh, that is a good idea. But when you've got, like, I think it's 96 uh, billion of possibilities uh, in your runes, you've got also the traits, you've got the skills, uh, you've got the charms and the talisman. Uh, so how are you going to manage the fact that all the players will have to think about all this when creating their character and also how are you going to balance this in PvP? Because basically if you're playing with three players, it's nine to six billion multiplied by three plus the trades plus etc. <laughs> Such... All right, so that's two questions. Anybody yep. want to take one of those? Okay, so on the uh, UI side of things, um, I'll leave the PV1, P1 for Jay for a second here. On the UI side, you don't have that many choices at any given time. You know, so the way it works right now, which may change, of course, we're always iterating, is um, you know, every even numbered level you get a one skill point, and you have you know, uh, your, your kit of seven skills that you can pick. So initially when you start the game, you just have one, and then two, and three, and so forth. You can add another skill point into an existing one to level it up or pick a new skill. Uh, that's just one example, and same thing with the traits, you're sort of spending one point at a time. It, it adds complexity over time, but it's all very accessible, and all the UI revisions you see us do are there to make it easy to make those choices. So these little small choices end up becoming something much bigger um, you know, as, as time progresses. So the UI actually does a great job of keeping the, the choices compartmentalized. So I'll take the balance one. Um, so. How do we balance? I mean, you, I think you're specifically asking about PvP, but I'm going to take it broader than that. Um, most of the time, I mean, how do you balance a game is, I, I could probably talk for two or three hours about how you balance a game. It's very difficult to answer that question quickly. So what I'll say is it's part the power of math, um, it's part playing the game a lot, um, and it's part targeting what, what level of balance you want. Speaking to specifically to PvP, one of the goals we have is to make sure that PvP never affects PvE game balance. So it's one of the reasons why we've put PvP into arenas that are separate from the PvE game. We'll never nerf a PvE skill for PvP. We can balance every skill specifically for PvP. Awesome, thank you. Hi, I was wondering about your uh, plans for endgame content for Diablo 3. Are we just going to kill the last boss on the hardest difficulty and that's it? Or will there be some kind of multiple repeating dungeons that you can do with your friends so that you don't run out of stuff to do at the end? Uh, no, you'll kill the last boss like 800,000 times until your eyes bleed, right? <laughs> Please. <laughs> so, um, when we don't have the end game figured out yet. Um, the right time for us to figure that out is going to be when we're getting close to beta, um, when we've probably right when we've put it into players hands and they can play a good portion of the content um, it's hard to build in game before you have game so you know it has to come in the right order that being said we think we have a pretty good idea of the kinds because there's a lot of different kinds of players and Diablo 2 didn't really do a good job of catering to all of them there's those players who want to 
uh, re-roll characters, and that's their version of the end game. They don't necessarily want to search for loot. They want to, you know, play a different character or replay the same character for a good reason. So we can come up with good motivations that reward that activity. There's players who want to acquire more loot. And really for them, what we want to do is say, well, what's the most fun way to play the game? That should be the best way to get loot. So for us, it's mostly cooperative play. And it's actually a lot of the core game of fighting monsters. And uh, bosses are fun, but they get repetitive. We'd really prefer you to play much more of the game and that be the fastest way to get loot because it's the most fun. And then PvP is now a factor as well. A lot of players are going to want to play because they're going to be trying to perfect the perfect PvP build. Um, and that has definitely uh, got a big in-game in and of itself. Thank you. Um, hi. Um, uh, what is your priority um, for adding multiple uh, multiplayer game modes, like uh, maybe uh, obviously CTF and uh, Deathmatch come to mind in addition to the arena? Um, but what about things like uh, uh, an escort or hunted, or um, say for instance, uh, base attack or defend, or even more specifically, a uh, Dota killer? Um, because if there's any game that I think can do it, I think it's this game's multiplayer potential. Okay, I'll take that one. Um, we do. I, we very much want to focus on um, making sure that it supports what the core game is. We don't really want to pull the game in a lot of different directions. Um, so um, any mode that we might do is going to be focused back on the core game. Would we do more modes or different kinds of ways to play the game? Yeah, if we thought it would support um, the goal of what we want the game to be. Um, and uh, is that a possibility? Absolutely. Um, we're really going to have to see how the game turns out and how people are playing it and where we feel, it's kind of similar to, to talking about the end game, where, where are we missing an opportunity to appeal to part of the audience that might want to play a particular type of game. Thank you. Um, a lot of us who played Diablo 2 um, focus more on PvP even though it wasn't really uh, supported. What are you guys going to do for maybe like clan or guild affiliations? Not like a World of Warcraft full-blown guild UI, but maybe just letting people know where you come from. Um, so we haven't, uh, we haven't actually decided what we're going to do with guilds yet. It uh, would be a battle net level feature, and a lot of our battle net stuff is, is under discussion. So we're not quite sure at this point. Hi. Um, I was just wondering uh, when the game is coming out. No, I'm kidding. I just wanted to Tuesday ask. Tuesday after it's done. Could you give us a, a BlizzCon 2010 update on the economy in this game? What your plans are for trading? Get that one too. Um, you guys have to ask a programming question soon. Jason's going to get lonely. Um, so, economy. Um, well, we announced artisans a couple months ago, and artisans are um, a massive impact on the economy. Um, Diablo II's economy had several problems. It had an arbitrary gold cap, um, which essentially limited the ability to use it as a high end currency. Um, there was a massive amount of gold input into the economy and almost no gold leaving the economy. Um, so with uh, Diablo 3, uh, we have a lot more control on gold coming in. We, we just don't throw quite as much gold at you. Um, you know, Diablo 2 really used gold as a, a reward. They just kind of threw it at you in buckets. And um, that it ceased to actually be a reward because it, you didn't care about it anymore. So we've got a lot more control over that. We've learned from that experience. And also on the sell prices of items, we've control. We uh, now salvage items for the uh, crafting system, which pulls one of the gold producers at, back out of the economy without turning it into gold. Um, and um, the crafting system itself has lots of gold inputs. Um, and they're, one, they're gold inputs that repeat. So every time you get a new item, you want that item to have the best possible gems. And you want to maybe pull gems out of another item and you want to enchant it, and you might want to add sockets to it. 
All those things cost gold. Um, and those things, that's, that is our primary way that we're going to pull gold back out of the economy. Um, so that's the economy question. The trading question is we definitely want to support um, some kind of enabled trading. Like we don't want you to have to spam chat channels or make games with special names. Or, you know, those were, that was not awesome. Uh, and we know it wasn't awesome. So we do want to fix it, but we haven't decided exactly how yet. I'd also like to jump in and, and say that, uh, you know, in, in Diablo 2, we had the occasional problem with item duplication, which sort of hampered the economy. Um, I, I don't remember that. Yeah. It, it, it's true. Um, so we've learned a lot since the days of Diablo 2, and, uh, you know, we have completely rewritten the item system from the ground up to make it more safe, more secure. And uh, we expect that with Diablo 3, that you're going to have the best experience yet. So it's a big deal to us. Thank you. Hi, I had a question. Is there going to be a, like specific PvP gear or skills, you know, like resilience, or is there going to, like out on the floor with the arena battles? I noticed that the skills had cooldowns that are not present on the, the PVM uh, demo. So if you could elaborate on that. Um, we're not going to have PvP gear. Um, PvP is not. Thank you very much. We appreciate your support. Do you guys um, want resilience in Diablo? No! Oh. <laughs> we knew that. So yeah, no, we're going we're gonna to avoid uh, PvP specific stats, and we're not going to have any PvP gear or any, any no power is going to come from PvP. It's not the point of it. Um, we don't want any kind of conflict between the PV and PVP game. And then the way we actually, the arenas work is every skill has a set of PVE data and PVP data. So yeah, we do actually alter some of the aspects of skills to make them work in PVP. Uh, we try not to alter them so much that they change the nature of what the skill is. So they tend to be things like we might change cooldowns from PVE to PVP. Uh, we might change uh, costs or tweak damage a little bit. Um, but we try not to change it so that it's foreign to you. We do have some skills that are more PvP leaning um, because we don't feel with the customization that you have in Diablo, it's pretty easy to avoid those skills if you're never going to PvP. Um, but there's some skills that's just too... It's not that they're useless in PvE, um, it's that they're maybe not as useful as, or desired as they would be in PvP. And we, we think that's fine, as long as it doesn't dominate the whole skill set. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to know what Deckard Kane's doing in Diablo 3. I haven't heard anything about him, and I do like that guy. He's uh, doing the same thing he always is doing. He's trying to uh, thwart evil. Um, he's been spending the last 20 years uh, trying to, he's researching, looking for ways to stop the coming invasion of hell, because now that the uh, world stone has been destroyed, um, there's nothing keeping hell from invading, and uh, he doesn't know why they haven't invaded yet, but he's, uh, he's going to make damn sure that when they do invade, mankind is prepared. Thank you. Nathan does an awesome deck of King, by the way. Come on up. Just do it. One more song. Thank you all for coming out to BlizzCon. Sorry, sorry, Nathan. It's more of a fan service. It's not really good, but I can't stop. I can't be stopped from doing it in the play tests and then the uh, like the the placeholder sounds in the game. It's 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 awful, but it's something I love to inflict on the team. All right. This morning you asked. Um, you implemented a lot of story, trying to get story in different places and as many places as possible. Are you also trying to address? different story reactions and interactions with a uh, wizard compared to a monk when dealing with an ape NPC for uh, story replayability? Um, we're not having different, uh, if I understand your qu question correctly, we're not having different paths through the story, but um, the different characters, the different player characters will react to the story differently to a certain degree. And um, one of the things we're, we're toying around with right now is um, the quest log is being um, relayed 
Um, the quest log has a verbose, which is more wordy version of your quest objectives.